And welcome back to Music 64 Advanced Ear Training with Professor Bierson. This will be our first lesson of the semester, and we'll get right into it. Let's do it. So for today, we're going to review something. Um, this should be something that you might have covered in the second ear training course at Hofstra. Um, but it's the two versus three polyrhythm. We're going to start our semester off with polyrhythms again. So I think that beginning with a review of two plus three is a good way to get us back into the topic. The way that we remember and perform polyrhythms is to use phrases. So when you have three notes on the bottom, no, when you have two notes on the bottom and three notes on the top, you can use the phrase nice cup of tea. And when you have three notes on the bottom and two notes on the top, you can use the phrase pass the butter. We'll get into that when we go into the exercises. As far as the melodies go, we are going to learn this semester how to do chromatic solfege. And the first way to get into that is to first obviously learn what the solfege is, and secondly, to see how it works in musical examples with embellishing and neighbor, sorry, embellishing neighbor and passing tones as chromaticism. So let's take a look now at the rhythm. All right, so when we see this example, the first thing I want to say is that I'd like to try and have us clap the lower line and sing the top line on syllables. I use codally, so T, key, ta, ta, and stuff like that. Um, I'll talk about what that is. And then you can also use whatever you want. You can just ta, you can just, um, you can count. Um, so that's fine with me. I like to use the Codaly system, and that's what you'll see me perform with. So the bottom line is just going to be um, clapping. And it's a completely the same thing every single measure. It's an ostinato pattern. So it's going to sound like this. And for the top line, you can see that we've got dotted eighths and sixteenths. And so every time I have an eighth note, I use T. Every time I have a sixteenth note, I use tiki tiki. And every time I have a quarter note or a dotted quarter note, I use the syllable ta. That's the quarterly method. So for the first two measures, I'll say ti ki ti, ti ki ti, ti ki ta. You see? This particular exercise has the three on the bottom and the two on the top. So if we just look at the first measure, it's kind of getting into the way we think of these polyrhythms. There is where I'd say um, we can get into it, past the butter. Now, normally, um, if we have a pure two versus three polyrhythm, we would look at the second line of the music, and you can see there, past the butter, and that actually lines up quite well. Um, so if we just now shift our attention to the bottom, Pass occurs together on the beat, both parts. The is the second, is the lower um, second beat. But is the second top beat. And then ter is the third bottom beat. And so if I were to play those notes like a C and G on the piano, the bottom being C, the top being G, it would be pass the butter, pass the butter, pass the butter, pass the butter. And you can hear that the three notes, there's three C's being played at an equal time and two G's being played at an equal time at the same time. So that's how we make a polyrhythm. And we just listen to it. Okay, so that's the bottom line is representing that two versus three polyrhythm in its pure form without any other rhythms. And if we look at the top line now, we get how the relationship can be originated, um, if you think purely in 6-8, you have the three eighth note beats and the bottom part, and then the top part has the first, the dotted eighth, right? And then the sec the sixteenth note after the dotted eighth is where the second strike happens for the two part, okay? That's where the second beat would occur. Now you can see in the bottom line we've dotted that eighth note, so that puts these two sounds together to make this two equal notes happening. And here we've actually we're articulating a another eighth note pulse. So it's kind of getting us into performing the rhythm um, before we actually do it, which is why I kind of I like the way that this book approaches it. If we look at the first measure only, let me practice it with you. Um, I'll do it a couple of times, and we'll go measure by measure. 
slowly. Tiki ti tiki ti. Again. Tiki ti tiki ti. Looking at measure two now. Tiki ta. One more time. Tiki ta. And you can see that the second pulse of the two even dotted eighth notes happens, it coincides with this pulse of the lower part. Okay. So you can line it up when you're playing, when you're clapping the bottom part, you can actually line this note up when you hit this 16th note. All right, next third measure. T key T T key T. Again, T key T T key T. Fourth measure. Now we have all these dotted eighth notes, okay? But don't be fooled. You're going to hit this one and say this one at the same time. And then when that goes away, you're still going to have this one come in at that same moment. So it sounds like this. T key T key. Again. T key T key. And now the last measure is ta. Okay, that's e that's the easiest measure of this whole exercise. Um, okay, let's go now to the second line. And we, here we have the pure polyrhythm without any other rhythms in it. This is it right here, two versus three. So let's practice this measure. T key T, T key. Again, T key T, T key. Next measure, T key ta. Again, T key ta. And then here we are, the next measure, T key T, T key. There it is again, the two versus three. Here again, one more time, same measure. T key T, T key. Next measure. T key T key again T key T key and then the last measure is actually even easier than the other one ta okay and you're done so we'll set our metronomes to 52 that means that the dotted quarter is 52 each half bar of the 6 8 measure is going to be 52 beats per minute okay Let's go ahead and perform it, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, next exercise. Now we are in 3-4, so the relationship is going to look a little different. And this is also the opposite. This is when the 3 happens on the top line and the 2 happens on the bottom line. And the first time that that really happens is here in the fifth measure. And this is where you would say nice cup of tea. So let me now use D and A as my notes. D being the lower note, A being the top note. And you can do... Nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea. And again, you can hear now there's three even A's happening above the two even D's at the same time. again at the bottom actually it happens quite a bit at the bottom line and this is actually completely unembellished this is a pure 3 over 2 relationship let me just then go over the measures where this happens so let's look at measure 5 first only 
and I'm going to clap the bottom line and use chordally rhythm syllables on the top. Ta ti triola. Ta ti triola. And this measure is also good because it gets you into it slowly. It gets you starting the eighth notes before the three over two happens. So you have a good reference point for how to keep those going smoothly. And then you can say triola for the triplets above that. So it kind of takes up the nice cup of tea, right? Triola. Let's go to measure seven. It's the same exact thing. Ta ti triola. Ta ti triola. Measure eight. Ta triola triola. Okay, there it happens two times. Both times you have the eighth notes. You have triola on top of it, the triplet. Ta triola triola. Now let's take a look at the measure sorry, nine, 10. Another variation on the same thing. Ta, ti, ti, triola. Ta, ti, ti, triola. And then measure 11. Ti, ti, triola, triola. Ti, ti, triola, triola. Okay. So you can clap the lower line and use vocalize the top line using codally syllables or whatever you prefer. And I recommend practicing it that way. Go measure by measure, try to get the polyrhythms figured out, and then um, slowly build up speed. And we're gonna get to 80 beats per minute. And this 80 beats is the quarter note. So each one of these quarter notes is gonna move at 80 beats per minute. And we're going to perform our exercise over that. Let me show you how that works. Ta ti ta ta ti 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 ta 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 ti ta ta ti triola ta ta ti triola ta triola triola ti ti ta ti ta ti ti triola ti ti triola triola ta. All right, let's shift now to our melodic portion. Melody exercise one is an etude, or actually a scale in the chromatic C major scale. So <clears throat> starting on Do, I recommend you sing this scale with an instrument like a guitar or a piano, um, something that you can sing and play at the same time and have an even chromatic scale because you can get easily disoriented and out of tune if you just sing the scale. Um, I would sing it like dozens of times and every time my octave was a little off. Um, it's just hard to hear when you have all these even chromatic intervals where you are. Um, so I recommend just doing it like this. <clears throat> now the way chromatic solfege works is that each note of the diatonic scale um, has an altered syllable to make it with an I. So like Do becomes D when it's sharped. Re becomes Re. Mi is already a half step to Fa and that's kind of why it's called Mi. Okay, that's why that syllable is an I after that because you have the half step leading to Fa. Fa becomes Fi, Sol becomes C to La, Li become, La becomes Li to T and T is already an I sound and it goes to Do. Okay, so these are kind of, when you go up, you're kind of thinking of these as being leading tones going to the next scale degree. Okay, mi, fa is already a leading tone, to, it's already a half step. Fi to sol, si to la, li to ti. Let's hear how that sounds. Do, di, re, ri, mi, fa, fi, sol, si, la, li, ti, do. Going down, the rule of thumb is now we flat the notes and the syllables change to an A sound. So, do, ti, te. La, le, sol, se, fa, mi, me, re. Now, re is already an A sound. Okay, that's just coincidence. 
So we have to alter that by using Ra down to Do. Let's hear how that sounds. Do, Ti, Te, La, Le, Sol, Se, Fa, Mi, Me, Re, Ra, Do. All right, so let's go ahead and sing that. Do, Di, Re, Ri, Mi, Fa, Fi, Sol, Si, La, Li, Ti, Do, Do, Ti, Te, La, Le, Sol, Se, Fa, Mi, Me, Re, Ra, Do. Now let's take a look at our first melody that has chromatic embellishing tones in it. Um, this is in C major. We've got our bass clef, so watch out for that. We are in common time, or 4-4. Four, four. And I like to analyze melodies in segments or phrases. So the first phrase to me is a two-measure idea. And you can see that we've got um, quite a bit of elements in it, melodic elements. So... Do, ti, do, re, do, sol, sol. Fi, sol, la, sol, mi. Okay. I left off on the mi there because this is a pickup phrase. So it's kind of like this is where the idea ends. And then the next idea picks up just like rhyming with the beginning. So think of the measures as off by a beat. So again. Do, ti, do, re, do. Now we got this kind of scalar embellishment of the note do. Do, ti, do, re, do. And then we go down to sol, sol. Okay, so kind of like a tonic triad skip. And now we're going to embellish the sol. Sol, fi, sol, la, sol, mi. And then it's another triad skip, tonic triad skip. Okay, so this melody kind of rhymes in this sense as well, right? We've, we're embellishing. Do, ti, do, re, do. We're embellishing the tonic note with its lower half-step neighbor and upper whole-step neighbor. And then we do the same thing, but we have to modify the F to make it F-sharp. Fa becomes Fi to do the same thing exactly on Sol. Sol, Fi, Sol, La, Sol, Mi. You can almost think of this as a temporary leading tone to the G. Do, Ti, Do, Re, Do. Okay, but it's not. It's part of a tonic triad. Sol, Fi, Sol, La, Sol, Mi. Right, because if you see all the notes from the beginning, Do, Sol, Mi, it outlines a tonic triad. Now we get to the next phrase, the first note, the pickup, finishes that triad off. Okay, here we have nothing challenging. Do, ti, do, fa, mi, re. Okay, we leap from do to fa, and then we head down to re. All right, the next idea, it starts with a pickup at the end of the line, but my box is going to start at the beginning. <clears throat> sol, fi, sol, re, fa, mi. All right, and that's going to be tricky because we have eighth notes there. So it's going to move quick. So you're going to have to go sol, fi, sol, re, fa, mi. By the time you get off of this sol, you're forgetting about fi because we're going right back to the regular major scale. Sol, re, fa, mi. These are regular major scale relationships. And if you think about these notes, just like they're outlining the dominant seventh chord, right? Sol, re, fa, and then it resolves properly. Fa resolves to mi. It's just that before that, we've decorated our soul again with a lower leading, a lower chromatic embellishing neighbor tone. Sol, fi, sol, re, fa, mi. The next thing is pretty much the same. It's just now we're going to piano. Sol, la, sol, fi, sol, re, fa, mi. Okay, we just added a little, a little extra to it. But again, it's sol, la, sol, fi, sol. And then right back to the regular C scale, re, fa, mi. And then the ending. Sol, do, ti, la, ti, do, re, do, ti, la, ti, do. That is all tonic major scale. Okay? 
leading up through the triad. Mi sol do ti la ti do re do ti la ti do. So again, I recommend thinking of these melodies in little bits. Work on the individual bits, and then you put the whole thing together, and you try to get it up to tempo. So this one is going to be 90. Don't forget also that you have dynamics. Let's go ahead and do this with 90 and sing it. Do, ti, do, re, do, so, so, fi, so, la, so, mi, do, ti, do, fa, mi, re. So, fi, so, re, fa, mi, so, la, so, fi, so, re, fa, mi, so, do, ti, la, ti, do, re, do, ti, la, ti, do. All right, the last exercise for this week is a really beautiful piece of music. It's from Bizet's Carmen, and this is the famous aria number. So if we look at this one, first of all, we are in um, the treble clef, and we have a one flat key signature, and this is actually in D minor, not in F major. We're in D minor, and you can see all the chromatic stuff is going on here with respect to the minor scale. Um, I'm going to break this down like this. The first idea is going from Do down to Sol using chromatic notes. So, Do, Ti, Te, 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 La, Le, Sol. Every time we lower a note from the major scale, it becomes, the syllable takes an A sound. Do, be, Ti becomes Te, La becomes Le. And we're going straight from Do down to Sol. Do, Ti, Te, 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 La, Le, Sol. The next part, we have Sol, Sol, Fi, Fa, Me, Fa, Me, Re, Me, Fa, Me, Re. So here's a little exception to the rule, right? Because we're going down, normally you'd think that this would be a Se and an A flat, but it's not. So this is something about um, tonal music, classical music in particular. The, the relationship between like Fi and Sol is really important so important that they actually think of it more so than say going to fa it this g sharp is kind of like relating to the a and then it gets canceled out right it's, it's not an a flat relating to the g so this is this is one of these things in tonal music that we say generally when you're going down the scale you want to make an a sound and use flats but in this case we're going down the scale and we use the sharp because again this this relationship is so important that Fi to sol, that we think of it as sol fi, but instead of going back up to sol, we just cancel the fi out and we go down. So let me just sing the first two phrases together. Do ti te 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 la le sol 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 fi fa me fa me re me fa me re. All right, that was kind of tricky, but the good news is that once you get it. It's the same thing, more or less, in the second part. Do, ti, te, 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 la, le, so, so. Rest. That's my first phrase ending. It's, it's almost the same exact thing as before. Now the ending for the second part is different. There's no more chromaticism, and the measure, the, the, the exercise ends on the tonic note D. So, fa, me, re, me, re, do, re, me, re, do. So this is like a parallel construction, but the first one, the melody ends on re, which we call a half cadence. And then the second one, the melody ends on do, which we call a perfect authentic cadence. And when you have two parallel phrases, like where the first one ends on a half cadence and the second one ends on a full cadence, we call that a period. Okay, let's set our metronomes to 52 and work on this one. Do, ti, te, 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 la, le, so, 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 fi, fa, me, fa, me, re, me, fa, me, re. Do, ti, te, 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 la, le, so, 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 fa, me, re, me, re, do, re, me, re, do.